Hey, Lord, this is Purge, to bring you a Purgecast, a pub video. I am pretty busy today, so I figured I'd knock one of these out really quickly, so I'm going to record this with XSplit, hence the increased resolution. Um, I wish I could do this a little bit more often, but I uh, use XSplit, that is, but usually I'm streaming a lot when I make content. So, without further ado, we're going to be casting a pub game that one of my friends played. I have not watched this replay before, so I really don't know how things are going to turn out, but uh, we'll see. Okay, we have a Phantom Lancer in the game, played by Olio. We have... Uh, I Heart Zombies playing Kunkka, Aqua's on the Nature's Prophet, Toon Guy, and then Juggernaut, and Honkers on the Crystal Maiden. And for the Dire Team, before I sneeze, um, yes, sneeze, yeah, nope, okay, no sneeze, alright. Alright, Twisco <laughs> is going to be playing Zepudge over here on the mid lane, that should be a good time. Um, he was the one that uh, messaged me, or talked to me and said, oh, you should totally uh, do this stuff. Cast this game. Um, he actually wanted me to watch it at, at uh, day of, I believe, because he wasn't sure quite why he lost. But we're gonna go over that stuff here. Put good old uh, bald pudge over here, going for soul mid twisco playing that. Uh, Uranix also in this game playing the ancient apparition. He likes that hero a lot. We have CC fast Eddie playing the Nyx assassin. Swift will on the anti mage and Death Prophet has disconnected. And uh, we're gonna speed up these these uh, good old clouds while we're waiting here, since we did have a disconnect from the Death Prophet. So things will be starting in a second here. There's the pick, and we go back down to, this looks like one times. Okay, beautiful. So, starting item builds, uh, Phantom Lancer has picked up Doppelwalka level 1, which is reasonable. One Ringer Protection, a Tango, and a Salve. He did not random, so this is all the money he has. Um, this is pretty good. I hope he makes Tranquil Boots out of the Ringer Protection. I, I strongly, strongly believe that Tranquil Boots Soul Ring is by far the best build on Phantom Lancer. I dare say that there's no better build on it. Like, it's just so much more effective than everything else you can do because it gives you unlimited mana. The tra or the Soul Ring gives you 150 mana. You use 140 of this to go for Spirit Lance, which has an insanely low cooldown, very spammable spell. So you use Soul Ring, you use Spirit Lance, you have 10 leftover mana, you use 10 of the leftover mana to use Tranquil Boots. So basically, you get a Spirit Lance and a Tranquil Boots to heal up all of the mana you just, or HP you spent on Soul Ring. And you only get spend 15 mana on it, which is insane. Like it, it's pretty much freelance every 20 seconds and a tranquil boots to make up for it. The only downside to that build is it doesn't give you a lot of HP, so it's important to probably get a vitality booster shortly afterwards, and you can use that for a heart much later in the game. So if you guys are playing Fan Lancer, strongly, strongly recommend always to get Tranquil Soaring. Pretty much always. Don't go Treads Vanguard, you don't have enough mana. Don't get a Ring of Basilius, it's not enough mana. Just get a Soul Ring with a Tranquil Boots, it's awesome, I promise. So it looks like he's actually sold in the long lane, which is kind of weird. They have a Jungling Nature's Prophet, he should be starting a base, by the way. And uh, spawning Treants and then running to the jungle gives you two free Treants. See, now he's going to run out of mana, half of his mana, on his first cast. And uh, there hasn't even been a spawn yet. So it's going to be a small camp, and he's going to go jump on that. Mid lane is a Kunkka, going for Tidebringer first, which is fine. Um... Pudge actually has the same HP as Kunky here, so his chance of getting a rock kill right now is pretty much non-existent. But for now, he should just focus on getting last hits and stuff. So, uh, Kunky starting item build is great. There's nothing wrong with this. On the bot lane, Juggernaut with a double slipper, a salve tango with a clarity. Um, he's probably going to turn this into a poor man's shield, but I, I dare say that maybe grabbing the stout shield first is a better option. I might be wrong. This is a really strong dual lane, though. Crystal made it with a Juggernaut. It looks like she was the one that brought the courier and uh, how about observe wards. Um, you probably shouldn't do this, guys. Uh, if you're gonna buy wards, you should buy them at the start of the game. I guess she probably bought Courier and was gonna wait until she got 200 to uh, place them, but... Uh, this does tie up the Courier a very long time if the Courier has to run all the way across the map, so generally this is not a very smart thing to do. Oops, I gotta slow things down a little bit. So generally just don't bring the Courier all the way across the map. Um, because now this Courier's tied up for such a long period of time, and if Coco was actually getting a bottle, by the way, like, it would be a big deal. Looks like Twisco gets a kill mid. That was a level 1 hook with some rotting on the Kunkka. Did he, he did cast a torrent, but I'm guessing he missed it or something. Who knows? Uh, Twisco completely out of ma uh, HP, but he's going to run back to base now. Uh, rather than running back, I would dare say that he should... Sorry, that's my cell phone, guys. I dare say that he should just actually ferry items to himself, ask for a flying courier, or buy a flying courier, bring himself a salve and a bottle, and then go get rune control, because the rune is up now at two minutes, and he does have vision of it, so if he would have just sat there, he would have got a lot of EXP. I mean, he basically just lost, uh, lost a lot of EXP leaving mid, and now look at the EXP difference. He's barely ahead of Kunkka despite him getting a kill on the guy, so probably should have just sat mid for a bit and grabbed more EXP, bring the bottle as well as a salve to himself, and then he would have an even bigger level advantage over this Kunkka here, so that would have been the smarter decision. 
PL doing a nice job last city. He's got five last hits. Death Prophet has wards with decent items here. Uh, looks like she's supporting Anti Mage. This isn't a good hero to support Anti Mage on. She doesn't have a disable. She just has a nuke, and she's actually a very farm dependent hero. She's a little squishy otherwise. So it's not good for um, Death Prophet here to be in a lane with an Anti Mage. This is not ideal. The Dire team doesn't really have good lane setups. Um, in terms of Nyx, uh, Ancient Apparition, this actually works out okay. You can actually do this dual lane. It's not the end of the world. Kind of weird, but it, it does work out. Crystal Maiden's gonna drop some stuff down. We'll see what Nyx does here. Cold Feet was a little delayed here. I don't know if they're gonna be able to latch this. Yeah, the, if that Cold Feet was a little bit earlier, they would have gotten this kill for sure. Okay, they do get it. But um, the Cold Feet was a little late. You wanna try to start the Cold Feet right before the stun comes. Oh, that was. <laughs> you gotta do the Cold Feet right before the stun comes, basically, uh, from people. And there's a spin now from Dark. Looks like he just might get a double. You're actually doing the smart thing, you're running away from Nyx. At least. Uh, does he have boots yet? He does not actually. Oh, but that's gonna get the kill. I think Crystal Manning showed up. Yep. And he picks up the kill, so. Why do I feel like my performance is lacking a little bit? Um, we'll see if Nyx dies. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna reduce the scale viewport down here a bit. I do not know. Things are going slow. Huh. That is unusual. That's really annoying, though. Um, let me check something really quick. I'm gonna close a couple programs that are uh, might be making this worse than it should be. Uh, closed iTunes. I'm gonna close Skype now. This is unusual. Good night, Skype. And it's still a little laggy. All right. Close all of the Chrome tabs. Close this. And it's a little better. I don't know. I'll just use the AR keys. It's a little better. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. I maybe I just need to reset my computer or something. Alright, Pudge is picking up a regen bottom, he did not, okay, he did pop it right away, he's coming for a gank actually. There's a lot of heroes bottom though, so this is going to look a little weird, and uh, especially Crystal Manning does actually spot him. Alright, he's a level 5 ganking as a Pudge, it's, uh, that's unnecessary, he does not do, need to be ganking right now. Like, you shouldn't be ganking as Pudge until you're level 6, almost always. I, mean, I know like Kunk is here and stuff, but like, they can just hold this back, or at least get level 6 before you come ganking, preferably 7, because his hook range obviously wasn't adequate there, so... He's going to purchase boots now, and he didn't even have boots when he went to the bot lane, so he wasted a lot of time going down there. Kunkka's going to die for pretty much nothing. Death Prophet's TP supporting, picking up three levels of Crypt Swarm with two Witchcraft. This is fine. Not necessarily worth the mana to clear the creep wave here, but whatever. And it's going to be a Basilius on Phantom Lancer, who's actually maxing out Doppelwalk first. Huge mistake here from the Phantom Lancer. This is not acceptable. The mana cost does go down a lot, which means you're more survivable. So in a way, you could argue, oh, I'm in the long lane, so I need to be survivable, but it's just not worth it. If you have a Soul Ring... You don't need to level up this skill that much. I mean, the only thing that changes is the cooldown and the mana cost decrease. It's just not really worth it. I strongly uh, recommend to not not uh, go the skill build. Because now, he's just a melee hero who has a lance that only does 100 damage. And it costs 125 mana. It just doesn't accomplish well. It looks like he got a hook here under tower, so... He's going to pick up a second kill now. They are in the advantage. Got a healing ward on Juggernaut. His skill build is semi-reasonable. Um, maxing out Blade Free is generally the best uh, the best build to go by far. And especially healing ward at level 1. It doesn't really heal that much. Uh, percentage base, once again, guys, when your HP is low, are not very high. Um, I, that's kind of confusing, what I just said. Percentage-based numbers are means that they translate to very low numbers in the early game. Frostbite just slightly out of range here. I think your NX is going to live. Yeah, he is going to live just barely. So, yeah, generally percentage-based things aren't so super effective early game, but obviously, you know, if he's got the mana, go for it. Send the mana on the heal. It's like Nyx is going to do some mana drain here. Pudge is doing something somewhere, and oh, he's in the jungle. He was looking for a nature's prophet, and he found him. He's actually doing a pretty good job. Picks up all seven, so hopefully he grabs a meat hook. He is doing a good job as a solo mid hero. If we look at the graph stuff... Um, nothing super amazing going on. I wish he would have sat mid a little bit earlier, though, because he did get some delayed uh, performance as a result. But it should be okay, I think. He's looking for a Kunkka kill again. Kunkka... That was a very unrealistic hook. He probably should have actually just ran up, in my opinion. Um, I guess he didn't have a mana. He didn't have the mana for a dismember combo, but... I mean, Kunkka didn't have boots, so why not go for it, you know? Might as well. He's gonna go play some wards. Death Prophet may spot him. He's level 6. Death Prophet going for... This ward spot's not the best. Um, usually place on this one instead, guys. This one only kind of covers 
The only thing it really covers is this rune spot and the pathing between these places. But this ward also covers that. This ward also, on top of that, gives you vision of this side, unless you put it in this bad spot. You gotta place it more like here. If you place it in here, you can also see the jungle. You see a little bit more stuff than uh, this one does. This one's better if you're worried about getting counter warded, but generally place in this spot instead. Crystal Maiden dies. Looks like we have a wand first out of Uranic. He has more than enough money for boots, by the way. He should definitely be spending his money. Um, I don't know if maybe he just hasn't had the chance to get the side shop yet, but make sure you don't sit on your money, guys, because it's just super inefficient. The chance, Especially against a Juggernaut. Juggernaut's going to spin and chase after you. You need to have boots. And I think he's going to go purchase them now, which looks good. Pops Clarity Potion. Boots pick up. Okay, good. Looks good. Nature's Prophet might create a little bit with Basilius. Pudge grabs the double damage. He's got phase boots, so his gankings actually be pretty strong. Dire Team actually does have an Observer Ward here. And Pudge should have been spotted. Look at this guy. And now he's like, well, I'll just walk into this one. And here comes the stomp, of course. Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. Oh, man. That was like worst case scenario for him. That was hilarious. He basically ran into the Centaur. The Centaur recognized that there were enough heroes around. And he stunned right after the Dismember landed. Which was what happened there. That was pretty funny. There's an ulti from Death Prophet. Uh, he's pretty low in mana, unfortunately, so he can't actually do any more nukes. Oh, that's a good nuke. One good little stun over here. I don't like the skill build from Nyx, by the way. He should be maxing out the Impale first, no matter what. Alright, there's a kill over there. Cold feet on Nature's Prophet. And more dancing. That's a pretty good stun. He's getting healed, though. I mean, it's 21 HP per second. That's a pretty insane heal right now. It's Death Prophet? Yeah, it is, actually. Pudge coming back. Did he miss his hook? He did. Oh, there's a courier. There's a courier. There's a courier. There's a courier. Oh, that was the Radiant Courier? Oh, so that was somebody else's courier. Okay, good. He's going to get a double, at least. Could have been a lot worse. Um, Twisco doing pretty well. Landed hooks and stuff. 93. So that was a Dire Team Courier. Make sure you upgrade those guys. Like, I know that they don't really have a dedicated support hero, but... You have to upgrade the courier, because stuff like that. Like, how did... The courier came through the river, and then through the jungle. I thought for sure that was a radiant courier, just because it was killed. You know, because it was in that position. Like, the fact... It must have followed somebody all the way through the middle or something, and then into the team fight. And that's just a huge gold loss. I don't know what was on the items, but... You have to be really careful about that. Um, let's see if we can check. I don't know what was on there, but it did not transfer. I know that for a fact. Really solid boat going on here by Kunkka really solid. <laughs> Crystal Maiden has two levels of her aura. I think this is kind of a waste. Pudge gonna look for another hook. He's actually got... Alright, nice. Nicely done. Dismember as well, and that's gonna be a dead Kunkka. He's got a lot of kills, man. Holy crap. He's doing quite well this game. Alright, let's look at top lane see how things are going. Phantom Lancer is actually leveling out uh, his, his good skill, which is Phantom Lance. How's Anti-Mage doing? I haven't looked at Anti-Mage all game. He's only got 26... How does he only have 26 last hits? I haven't looked at him like at all this game. Anti-Mage has been sitting top this whole game. He has... Oh god, he's rushing Vlad's before boots, really? Oh god. Oh, that pains me. I can feel it physically. Alright. I was talking about percentages earlier, and I know I've gone over this a couple times, but don't get percentage-based items first, especially on an Anti-Mage. He doesn't even have boots yet. He basically used his one level of blink to blink into the enemy team when he only had 300 HP. Phantom Lancer looks like he's actually rushing to Diffuse Blade. This build is not bad, honestly. The downside is that it doesn't give you HP regen. So that's the main thing that you're missing. But other than that, the mana as well as the general utility that you get from Treads, Wand, Aquila is pretty damn good. So if, if I wasn't going to go Tranquil Soul Ring, I would say something like this is pretty okay. Assuming you're not taking too much harass in lane. So. Now, Anti-Mage obviously has absolute shit farm, and I'm guessing it's because he's been sitting in the jungle the whole time. Now, keep in mind, if you buy a Morbid Mask, you don't get mana drains. So let's look at this creep. Alright, he's actually not getting lifesteal is what he's not getting. Right now, whenever he hits creeps that have mana, he does not get the lifesteal. So this 900 gold item that he just bought is not helping him at all. Like, he could have probably something like Treads at this point. So don't rush. Basically, his, his problem is that he thinks he's getting farm in the jungle, but he's not. I mean, look at the damage he's taking right now. Oh my god! Oh my god, no way! Oh, you just ulted that creep for a grand total of 0.6 times 200, which, if we do some math quick, that's a, that's 120 magic damage. He just did 120 magic damage to this creep here. Pretty insane farm. He's not even getting lifesteal. 
He's literally not even getting life steal right now. So Pudge gets a monster kill bottom. He's got a double damage. He's gonna throw a hook on a creep because he's trying to farm up a little bit here. Anti mage coming back. Does he have his Vlads? He does. He's got his Vlads, guys. Now he has life steal. All right. So let's see what this Vlads does for this level six anti mage. Gives him 16% or a life steal. 16% of his damage is uh, 70, so it's something like uh, 10 damage life steal. Yeah, he's getting about 10 HP every time he attacks. Gives him 5 armor, 5 armor at this level. 5 armor of 644 HP is uh, equivalent to about 6% phys or effective HP per 100 uh, HP, so he's getting like, I don't know, 6 times 6, like 36. Am I wrong? I'm sorry, I'm doing my math really bad. Alright, 6 times 5 is 30. He's getting 30% extra physical survivability if he just takes physical damage, but he doesn't have that much HP anyways. Oh my god, Elf Wolves don't even have mana, dude! Can you look at this? Oh god, this anti mage. Okay. Alright, so he's getting 10% 60. He's getting like 180 HP basically from this 5 armor. Sorry, my math isn't working. I haven't ate breakfast, so I'm not doing very good math. Uh, he's also getting mana regen, which is okay, because he does spam his ulti pretty often, as we can see. He's also walking in between camps without having boots. And, of course, he does have 2 HP, HP regen out of this. Oh, he's going to blink in. Here he comes for the kill. Except he doesn't have boots, and he's died. And he's going to continue auto-attacking, of course. Nature's Prophet can actually kill this dude. He's got a Mithril Hammer picked up. Tower gets killed, and Phantom Lancer is going to jump on him. Hopefully he blinks away. Thank God he does. PL actually has a pretty reasonable skill in item build, despite uh, some of his earlier choices being a little unusual, but there's just completely terrible choices going on so far. He killed him? Oh, he TP'd in and killed Antimage. Alright, Antimage is now dead twice with his Vlad Stout Shield Rush. Nature's Prophet item build is, or skill build is pretty weird. His item build is also kind of weird. Try to grab treads usually first before Mythway Hammer. I mean, the damage is good, but attack speed is going to pay off a lot more usually. Bot lane is being pushed. Kunkka doesn't have a whole lot of stuff. Nice deny from Death Prophet. Death Prophet has a ward on herself and two more wards. I would like to see maybe one level of silence just to have it. Because, uh, especially in kind of a support role like this without much tank, you're generally going to have to build... Wow, Twisco has just been dominating runes this game. Looks like Nyx's top his skill build is pretty good. His item build is great as well. Arcane Boots, Nil Talisman, the Wand. He doesn't have any HP regen, but that's okay. Kunkka is going to TP. He's going to go invisible. That was a little unnecessary, but... Are we going to see a grant? Wow, he actually landed that torrent. Hot damn. Kunkka, you're my bro. That's pretty good. Uh, Tread's not so good on Kunkka. Usually you want to get phase boots. The reason for that is you really just want to attack once every four seconds. You don't want to stack attack speed items on Kunkka. You want damage items. Just because it's all about the Tidebringer hit. So while Treads does give you 8 damage, it also gives you attack speed, and you don't really need the attack speed. If you grab Phase Boots, you have better positioning, especially as a melee hero, this can be important. But also you get 24 damage from it, so Phase Boots almost always the better Kunkka build, unless you're really worried about HP. In which case, whatever, go for it. Treads, Bracer, it's doable. But I'm not a huge fan. Um, this is the part where everybody gets glitched out, apparently, as they die. Uh, Juggernaut's items are pretty good. Phase Boots, Wand, uh, Poor Man's Ring of Health, if he goes for a Battle Free, it'd be pretty reasonable. Crystal Maiden has good items. Uh, her skill build is not ideal. Four levels of Arcane Ore is extremely outdated, especially because people have Arcane Boots now. Basically, when, when uh, this stopped being popular, it's when Arcane Boots came into existence. And now people focus a lot more on Crystal Nova and Frostbite Max Out, so that they can be a lot more contributive. Is that a word? Uh, so that they can contribute a lot more in uh, ganks and team fights and stuff. Nature's Prophet's build is now sexy. Treads as well as the Mithril Hammer. I don't know where Pudge is. Pudge, where you at, bro? He is in the jungle, he's got a haste rune, his skill build is fine. Anti-Mage continues to farm. Let's see what his GPM is, by the way. Just to, like, give you guys an estimation of how bad it is to farm jungle rather than lane. Uh, gold per minute, oops. Gold per minute on the Anti-Mage, 165. He is literally below everybody except for... Wow, look at these, look at this. Everybody on the Radiant, on the Dire team is just absolutely doing terrible except for Twisco. It's like he's the only person that's actually farming reasonably. Everybody else is way behind here. It looks like they're going to grab the uh, Crystal Maid at least. Here comes the boat. Oh, God. All right, that's going to kill Death Prop, actually. That's pretty good. What is he doing? He needs to bottle up and go back in. Bottle up and go back in. Anti Mage actually used an ulti, but we see an Omni Slash. Hey, he's going to live. Hey, Pudge finally went back into the fight. Oh, no, he killed Anti Mage. All right, that didn't need to happen, though. Twisco misplayed there. He needed to bottle up and go back in. He had full HP. He's got a hood. He's very, very farmed. I think he definitely could have gone in and engaged on those guys, especially when the Omni Slash happened. Like, 
he's not gonna die to an Omni Slash, basically. He'll be absolutely fine, so. No problem at all. So, uh, 15 to 11, they have a kill advantage at least, there's that. Uh, Nyx Assassin's going for a Dagon, but he's been misplaying a little bit, 2, 3, and 5. Uh, Death Prophet really needs HP. Uh, she grabbed a Phase Boots. She has three Observe Wards, but I think she at least needs something like a Bracer. I mean, I know she wasn't getting a lot of farm in her lane, possibly because Anti-Mage was there, you know, auto-attacking neutral creeps. Oh, he bought Boots! Hot damn. God, this is so bad. Guys, stay in your lane. Don't go in the jungle to farm. It's not good to jungle a lot of heroes. Like, if you don't have, if you're not like a Lycanthrope, or like a Nature's Prophet or an Enigma, it's just not, or a Chatter and Enchantress, it's not that efficient to jungle, it really isn't. Like, just because you can, I'll go on a rant here, just because you can jungle with your hero like Lone Druid doesn't mean it's efficient. And we can reflect this, obviously this is an extreme situation because Anti-Mage is in the jungle and not getting a lot of farm, but generally this is always the case. Lone Druid, he can jungle, but it's still slowly attacking neutral creeps. You're almost always better off in the lane. Unless you're an Enigma with a sick amount of DPS, or you're a Nature's Prophet with a reasonable amount of DPS, or a Chattering Enchantress, it's just not worth it to farm the jungle. Lane is almost always better. Every last hit is like 40 gold. What is a Centaur? Like 70? And that thing has 1100 HP. It takes forever to kill that. The only hero that actually has enough physical damage to make jungling in the or jungling worth it is like a hero like Lycan, so you just gotta be really careful. Uh, wow. Jumping the gun here on the Ancient Apparition big time. Nyx Assassin is still farming bot. He should probably engage, by the way. Uh, the rating team is kind of pushing his 5, so maybe they have to be really careful. Phantom Lancer getting very close to his defusal blade, and that's when things get really scary for the Dire team. You know, if they actually had reasonable items, which they don't. They don't have a lot of the hard disables either, which makes things tougher. But look at this, he's got a Vlad's, but he's still taking insane physical damage. God, if he ulties this. Oh my god. <laughs> he did it again. The Anti-Mage. Jungling Anti-Mage, guys. This is how you get farm. Use your ulti. Not on heroes. On creeps. Okay, Death Prophet looks pretty dead. Hopefully she throws a nuke at least. Nope, she's just gonna die. Okay. No nukes out of Death Prophet. If you guys are trapped in a sprout, you might as well at least try to do damage before you die. I know she wouldn't be able to hit the uh, Juggernaut, but... And now it's kind of like a weird 3 versus 1 situation going on here. He is not gonna land the Torrent. Anti-Mage buys his gloves of haste next, of course, because why would he need survivability for the meantime? AA ulti is gonna hurt. That's actually gonna hurt quite a bit. Ward does not heal through that. These bros will live. Just really miscoordinated. And the whole time, what was Nyx doing? Farming bottom. He needed to be there to engage, basically. Like, even if Anti-Mage sucks. And, uh, Twisco's really farm though. Uh, he's gonna eat a torrent. Oh, well, did he just ulti a creep? I dare say he just ulti a creep. He throws... Yeah, he's dead now. That was a lot of gold. Okay. Oop, and that looks bad. Luckily... Oh, he's dead. Alright, now things are going to absolute shit. So let's look at some things. Gold graph is not that far behind. EXP graph is not that far behind. It's basically just major misplaced. Yeah, he's gonna die in illusion. He almost got a kill there. This was like a case of one by one. First of all, Nyx Assassin was bottom. He wasn't even trying to defend the push. The radio team was five man. He might be able to grab some kills now. I think he will actually on this crystal. Oh my god, you should I would've hit that. I would have done that shit. I mean I guess he probably would have died, he would have been sprouted and stuff, but. He could have grabbed a kill and then ran away. Uh, maybe like initiate on Crystal Maiden, stun the Prophet and run, is what I would have done. So the Radiant team is basically just pushing his 5. We're going to have a Diffusal Blade on the way for Phantom Lancer, so he's going to get really scary. He actually, he's 4 0 and 5. Like, there's no reasonable way that Death Pro or Phantom Lancer should have gotten any farm top, honestly. Like, it should have been Anti Mage getting farm in lane and Death Prophet just harassing the guy. That's it. So Nyx is going to go mid now. Hopefully Pudge is going to show up as old Pudge, almost out of 4 staff. 4 staff would have been a really nice last fight, by the way, because he could have 4 staffed out of the, the yes Sprout. And it's actually going to be a Desolator Nature Prophet. Um, not the best item, to be honest, just because, uh, yeah, okay, it gives you more damage, but really a Sheepstick is almost always just so much more crucial. And having the utility of the minus six armor is nice, but it's not as useful as having a 3.5 second Sheep or Stun. I know that they're different prices, but almost always, guys, Sheepstick is by far the better choice for a Nature's Prophet. So... They are going to place some more wards down. Death Prophet has now bought a headdress. She could have had a bracer before. You never know. Actually, if she had that bracer, she might have survived to that Phantom Lancer. Or maybe the time that she died right here as well. You never know. And now there's uh, three heroes mid. Anti-Mage is here. He's looking to gank because, you know, he's got a Gloves of Haste. Nerubian Assassin should just be initiated on these guys. Like, he, he shouldn't be playing so passive. He's not really playing his role. And a ulti completely jumped at the gun once again. He needs to initiate. Thank God, finally goes invisible. 
Can you kill somebody? Just hit somebody. Just hit somebody. Oh my god. Thank you. Alright, they got a kill. Nature's Prophet is dead. Try to hit two people with that. Actually, oh, nice. He did hook on... Oh, he used his ulti on the, uh... The Phantom Lancer. I think we're gonna see this guy die as well. He is gonna also die. There's a, uh... Omni Slash, which is gonna kill Pudge. That was a poor staff for SP2. Just a lot of miscoordination coming from the Dire team. I mean, a lot of them don't have terrible item builds other than the Anti-Mage. I would say Death Prophet's build is a little shoddy. Um, Ancient Apparition is doing reasonably well, but it's just a lot of misplays with the heroes. Just a ton of hero misplays here. Like, if the enemy team is pushing his 5, you gotta fight his 5. And now that they've been fighting inadequately, because they haven't had their whole team set up in terms of gold as well as EXP, just everything is really, really far behind at this point. Like, their, their time to shine is, has passed. They had a gold advantage from the Pudge. Nerubian Assassin was not initiating properly. Anti-Mage is obviously worthless, but even with his super far behind item build that he's obviously shown, like, it could be, they could, they could still make something happen. Like, he could walk in and auto-attack a guy. Maybe blink out if shit got bad, but... It's mostly just teamfight miscoordination here. Looks like they maybe will grab somebody. Nyx is gonna go in. Oh my god, that was absolutely necessary hook attempt. I think Nyx is still going to be able to get this guy. Unless he sprouts in TPs. There's his ulti and here it comes. Yeah, there's a kill. So at least he does get that kill. He's close to his Dagon at least, but he needs to be a little faster about initiating. And try to land two Impales, guys. Or land Impales on two heroes instead of just one. Super important. When you have an AoE stun, you have to land that as many people as possible. If you're playing Lina, if you're playing Sand King, or even Rubin Assassin. Very, very crucial. That stun duration is insane. So... Uh, is he... Okay, he's going to Fusil into Crit. Still doesn't have any Lifesteal or HP or HP regen, which is definitely a fault in his item build, but he's got decent damage items, so I'm not going to fault him too much for this. At these lower levels of gameplay, this item build is going to suffice, but generally you're going to want a little bit more HP. Uh, we have a... Alright, Battlefield coming for Juggernaut now, so he's going to be able to do an even stronger Omni Slash, as well as just auto-attack pretty well. Nyx has his ulti up. And PL's come in mid. Let's see where the rest of the players are right now. Uh, Pudge is in base, I think. Looks like he's healing up. Next assassin needs to go invisible right now. There he goes. Alright, he went invisible. Could have maybe actually killed this for PL, actually. I dare say he should. If he could kill PL, that would be huge right now. Even sacrificing himself for this PL kill would be nice. Oh, there's a new... Yes! Yes, do it! Oh, god, no! Oh, no, you missed it! Oh, no! Fast Eddie! Fast Eddie, how could you- Oh, yes! Yes! Thank God. Oh, yes. Fast Eddie, you fucked up so bad, you missed your impale, and you then you waited so long. Oh, nice. Oh, is he gonna do this? Oh, he did! Oh, he dismembered, but he got frostbit. No, oh, he's gonna survive now. Oh, that sucks. And now Twisco's gonna run away. He probably shouldn't be running away. Twisco, why are you running away, dude? You have full HP. Alright, well, you got that guy, which is cool. But he's got a Lothar's now. You gonna pro it up? Nope. He's being a little bit too, uh, too afraid, I think. Rannick, you're dead. Alright, your Rannick dies again. More miscoordinations all over the place. Oh, the hook. Oh, nice. Hot damn, dude. He is, like, hooking like a total bro. He didn't get the rod off, though, unfortunately. But he'll still get him after a little bit of work. Oh, shit. Alright, he gets it. Okay, good four step. Bottle. Bottle. The bottle. Frostbite on the Death Prophet, who has no HP again. Is he going to get Om Omni Slash on cooldown? Alright. So things are going semi-okay. Uh, gold per minute is still extremely high for the Radiant team. Dire team is just getting out-farmed at this point because they're missed team fighting and generally just not farming well. Finally, we have a Treads up on the Anti-Mage at least. Um, so he's going to be able to get decent damage per second. But of course, he's got 58 last hits and uh, a lot of that is really, really slow neutral kills. So um, Death's assists. Yeah, Pudge is doing the best. Juggernaut's doing pretty well. And uh, yeah, Anti-Mage doing bad. Death Prophet seems like a decent player, but he's just not... I mean, he's buying a lot of wards and stuff, and simply as a hero, Death Prophet has to get farm and has to get tanky, and she doesn't have that yet, so that's the main issues there. Crystal Maiden has great items. Um, I wish Frostbite once again was maxed out over the aura, but obviously they are, they are, she is at least having some mana issues. She, it's like she used her ulti, perhaps, and that's why, but... Um, the mana is, the aura is great for Kunkka as well, since he doesn't have any mana regen items here. He's got a Shadow Blade and going for a Vanguard himself. Pro D wards, is he actually counter warding? Wow, that's annoying. That's got to be so annoying at the skill level. It's like, come on, man, I'm just trying to come back and survive. Alright. 
pro placing scoreboard. Okay. Shit talking, Crystal Maiden. Good stuff. He's really proven his point. He's got a Dagon now, actually. Does he use that on creep? He can actually kill PL really easily. Ooh, he might get initiated on, though. He needs to go invisible. Alright, he did. If he can jump on this PL, he can kill this PL. This is the guy he needs to kill. Very squishy. If he can kill him, it's gonna be huge. Please, God, kill the PL. Or you can just kill this guy instead, I guess. There's the hit. There's the stun. Please get him. Please get him. Please get him. Oh my god. Come on, Fast Eddie. You got this. Oh, Fast Eddie's gonna die. Fast Eddie died. Oh wow, he actually grabbed the right one. He didn't realize that. So, not the best time to dismember somebody when they're spinning like that, unless you really need to get him. anti is gonna die again without blinking. Uh, is he gonna blink into an ally? Wow, he's actually gonna live. Alright. The most, the highest damage dealing hero on the entire Radiant team right now is definitely going to be Juggernaut as well as PL. Those are the heroes that Ruben Assassin should be focusing on. He could kill support heroes like Crystal Maiden or Nature's Prophet, but literally all of the damage on the Radiant team is focused on Juggernaut as well as PL. PL, once again, going super greedy build. He only has 1000 HP. He should always be the target of the Nyx Assassin. Nyx should go invisible, he should right click the PL, he should stun him immediately, mana burn and Dagon, and that should be a dead hero, especially with maybe one other nuke on top of that from his allies. But a thousand HP from PL is not acceptable, he should not be doing this well, he could have dust as well to get the kills, to make these kills happen, like, regardless of how bad the Anti-Mage and the other players are doing, there are things that could be done by the Dire team to make the changes. Same thing with Pudge. He rock dismembered on a guy that was already spinning, um, they could have sentries or dust or anything like that. They could kill... I don't know, he could have killed Kunkka maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. But sentries or dust dust would... Oh, don't do it again. He's going to ward the same spot again. I think. There's an invis rune which he did not spot. Which he will walk away now. Um, Nature's Prophet is 2,000 gold. Hasn't bought any new items. Still just kind of going for this damage build. And Kunkka. Still pressuring, I guess. So... I mean, maybe anti mage can farm them when. Yeah, right. Uh, if he's gonna ulti creeps, which he will, of course. Ulti this creep. Ulti the creep! You gotta do it! Okay, he's not gonna ulti that creep. Here comes the Juggernaut. Anti mage blinks away. Uh, good blink. That was a real panic blink right there. Uranic one for Arcane Boost. I dare say HP is more important. Death Prophet's gonna die for nothing here. And, ooh, Uranic may die as well. Yeah, don't grab, uh, I'm not a huge fan of grabbing Arcane Boots on Ancient Apparition this late because he's already so far behind. Oh, nice, I actually got a hook. Oh, God, he went invisible again. Just buy some fucking dust. Jesus Christ, just buy some dust, you guys. Just buy it. All right, Nyx is gonna die now, I think. Uh, ooh, good ulti, actually. Oh, sorry, that was on Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage is gonna die. Oh, no. Oh, big four step, pro four step. No! He gets killed. Is he doing stuff? All right, okay, they got Juggernaut, actually. Nice. 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 Are they gonna hook somebody? Are they gonna throw a hook? Hook's not gonna miss. Or not gonna hit. Well, they got the Jug. I mean, PL once again needs to die, and he didn't. He gets to run back to base or heal on a healing ward or some shit. Still hasn't used a Defusal Blade. Probably a mistake, but... He should not be living this much. I mean, he's got good items within reason. He doesn't have HP, but he's not really playing that well. Like, he is making mistakes. He's gotta be better for stuff this, yeah. MPL almost dying again, but once again, not gonna die, because he's just gonna go invisible, and the enemy team's not gonna do anything about it. And once again, Death Prophet gets way too far forward, and does not have enough tank either, so she gets picked off. Looks like he's actually, actually going an AC build on Nature's Prophet. Um, against this team lineup, I would say this is a mistake. Um, not only because it's certainly just better to have disables once again, like a sheepstick, but also just because he doesn't really need the armor that much. It's good for pushing, yeah, the minus armor stack is all cool and stuff, but he could just increase his damage, and it would kind of pay off in similar ways. See if Kunkka goes Battle Fury or Vanguard. I'm not quite sure which one he's going to go for, but he's got the money for the Vanguard. Could make Perseverance as well. Um, I wish Pudge actually made a pipe right now. A pipe would be good. Not like they're team fighting very efficiently. Um, and there's not that much magic damage on the Radiant team, but he's got the money for the pipe. So maybe he'll do it now. Who knows? Radiant team is now taking Roshan. Dire team did see some wards up. And Nyx is still farming, something he should not be doing once again. He's got all the items he needs for the rest of the game. He's basically not going to carry. He's actually maxing out his Dagon. But he should be looking for kills, not not uh, farming the lane. So, yeah, Ancient Apparition really needs more HP than this. He should be trying to farm a Ghost Scepter or get some Bracers or something. He's not going to spend 900 mana. I mean, they're dying too fast for that. We're going to see a teamfight here. Let's see who messes up. Might be Death Prophet getting killed. Oh, nice sounds, actually. This would be... Oh, ulti is, of course, really badly placed. They're going to grab Crystal Maiden. Big ulti from A as well. And Omni Slash actually going to hit uh, some pretty decent heroes. This is actually really good for them. Okay, cool. Really great teamfight so far. They have three dead heroes. Nyx initiated, killed somebody, but ended up dying. 
Once again, another bad hook from Twisco as Jug's gonna fight. Death Prophet goes too aggressive again. And Anti Mage going for, I don't even know, Battle Fury, I guess, with a, a band of Elven skin. He should hook one of these guys. I think he, had, he should hook like Nature's Prophet or something. He tried to like force staff and then hook the guy that he force staff, but bought a vitality booster. Um, armor might also be really nice on Pudge. The Vlad's actually helping out quite a bit in that sense, because he's got so much HP. 5 armor really does make a big difference. He actually hooks somebody. Can he grab the right one? No, of course, because he's always going to go invisible. A ulti actually almost hit. It's a really close kill. Ooh, anti is going to die again, of course. He is a true bro. And things are kind of looking bad for the Dire team here. So, mid is going to get picked off. Look cold feet on the Juggernaut, but he doesn't care because he's got a healing ward. Hook's going to miss again. Death Prophet's HP looking a little better now, but that's just kind of like leveling up. Oh, he needs to initiate now. Jump on anybody, anybody. Yeah, I would do, uh, yeah, do Nisha's Prophet. Alright, good hook. Dismember as well on Jugs. The Jugs pretty much going to die for sure. I say ulti. Oh, oh it's going to miss. Wow, I thought that was going to hit. Wow, they gave up on the chase. He did use Dagon. He's pretty fast with Phase Yasha, but I think they could have gotten that kill, to be honest. Huh. Unusual. Pretty good stuff. They are going to run into Phantom Lancer once again. They do not, of course, have dust, because why would they have dust? Oh, he's going to ulti, and it actually did decent damage for once. That's kind of cool. No way. The Phantom Lancer went invisible and now he's running away and he's going to get some kills. God, why, why do people have to be so bad at, at, at fighting Phantom Lancer? Like, any invisible here, it's like, dude, all you got to do is buy dust and he dies. That's it. That's it. Just buy dust. It's not that hard. Like, they could have killed Phantom Lancer eight times or something. Like, seriously, so many times. Just one guy buy dust. Pudge by dust. Anybody by dust. I mean, it should be a, technically a support hero. But, oh god. Alright, Uranic also has way too much money. A thousand gold. Alright, if you have if you have no HP items, guys, if you're playing a support, it is so crucial that you spend your gold pretty fast. Especially when you only have 900 HP. It's just, you got to get your HP up. If you would have had a little bit more HP, maybe he would have survived there. And that's another death that's added to his name that didn't need to happen. Now, Ami Slash is going to own them. This is going to be pretty much the end of the game here. Pudge is going to get rocked. Kills, deaths, and assists. Pudge did relatively well. He made some mistakes, but the main issue was they didn't kill Phantom Lancer ever when they needed to. All they had to do is hold on to some... Wow, he actually got a hook off. Alright, he's gonna die. Okay, that's gonna hold off the win, I guess. That will buy them some time. She is gonna die. Yep. And PL, is he gonna die? No, no, no. Do they have dust? Of course not. Of course not. Oh, they have dust. Come on. There's the dagger on the illusion. No way. No way! They killed the illusion again. I can't believe it. He's got Dag on three now. The just Prophet is continuing his AC. Yeah, the main problem, they haven't killed PL enough. He's died once. They could have killed him like four times at least. And that would severely delay him. He's gonna buy a Demon Edge now, I think. By the way, guys, um, a crit, crit does apply to your illusions, but the damage numbers don't. So, like, buying just a Crystallis alone is, is kind of okay, but when you upgrade all the way to a Daedalus, this plus 81 damage that's not applied to your illusions. They get the 25% chance to crit for 250, but I would argue that uh, buying a Daedalus is really just simply not worth it. Um, I, you're much better off going for, like, I, like if you really want the crit, go for it. Buy the lesser crit, you kind of wasted 35 damage, but your illusions do get the crit, and that'll buy something like a Manta style, which gives you a lot of agility to increase your actual illusions damage, as well as, uh, or a butterfly, or something like that. Something that gives you a lot of illusions, or uh, a lot of uh, agility. I think that would be good. Alright, Death Prophet slowly trying to make her mech, something that would have been great to have finished a long time ago, but of course it's not. Uh, Uranic is now up to 1400 gold, which he has not spent. Ghost Scepter, anything, buy anything. Next, about to initiate once again a ult at the worst possible time. You gotta use this when they're grouped up or something, not just like when you're trying to get a random skill shot. Huge waste every time he does that. You gotta wait till they're engaged and grouped up, then you use it. Nyx might be able to initiate, but, oh, he's got AC now, so... Um, Nature's Prophet's gonna be really hard to kill at this point. Sanji, Nyasha, Juggernaut, not the worst choice in the world. It's, it's actually pretty decent. Gives you good HP and survivability. Oh, good hook. 
Can he save him? Oh, he does? Nope. Not enough. Uh, yeah, actually, they are gonna get... Oh, please tell me. Okay, they do get Kunkka. He did get Vanguard. He's going for crit now. With the broadsword. Hook's gonna miss again, and he kills the illusion again. No way, guys. It was an illusion. No way. In the meantime, Bot, Bot is gonna be Rex, but this is just kind of like a side effect of uh, their misplays earlier. So... Another hook on a core hero, but at this point it's pretty much over. Their coordination is just a little too crappy this game. Oh my god, if he just splash damage, that'd be awesome. Oh wow, he actually survived. Oh nice. He's gonna rot himself to death. Oh, he died to the Nature's Prophet Triance. Ultium. Oh my god. Are you gonna do it, Antimage? Antimage, you got this, bro. Oh, he's really fast, though. There's the Sprout. Nope. Alright, nope, that's it. Alright, cool. That's the end of the game. Now a couple right clicks. Oh, A ulti going for the snipe. It's gonna miss though. Uh, Nyx, are you gonna... Alright, he definitely should've gone on Jug there. If he just would've hit Jug with his hit, he would've died. Dagon a bitch? Yeah, he really didn't want to dag on them, but then he... Yeah, that wasn't worth it at all. He like, really wanted to save his Dagon and Kurikos the Maiden. But he should have gone on the Jugon. He should have been invisible over here. As soon as the AOLT debuffed him, just hit the Jug once, he would have died. It would have put him under the threshold. So that's the end of the game. Alright, cool. So, main issues that were made. They never bought Dust. Anti-Mage was terrible and always sat in jungle instead of sitting in his lane. If he just would have sat in his lane, he could outlane the PL very, very easily. Once he got a Ring of Health, if he got a Ring of Health and a little bit of, what, magic? I don't know, a couple level, like one or two levels of spell shield, he just would have like straight up dominated the PL in lane. PL shouldn't be able to do well at all in his lane. Damn. That's such a badass stuff. Who got that, by the way? That was the Nature's Prophet. Oh, that, that's pretty cool. He's probably really happy with that shit. It's like the best thing that ever happened to him. It's so awesome when people get items for the heroes that they play. Anyway, so they didn't kill the PL when they needed to. Um, having dust is so frustrating. It's so easy. Just get dust. Um, Ancient Apparition never spent his gold. He had no gold at the end of the game because he bought back, but he just needed to spend it on HP items. He never had HP items, and he never made good decisions with his ulti generally. Um, that was the big mistake. But Anti-Mage sucked. Death Prophet was a decent player, but kept being out of position. Never got HP items either, and therefore kept dying. Pudge was doing a generally good job, but made a couple slight team fight errors. And Ruben Assassin, or Nyx Assassin, which is simply uh, making big faults as well. So that's the main reason the Dire team died. Things that the Radiant team did that were good... Um, PL had generally good item build, he didn't die a lot, which was good, Kunkka did okay, he got a decent item build, his farm, he kept his farm up, Juggernaut kept his farm up, got good KD, Nature's Prophet kept his farm up, his item decisions could have been better, skill build was not as good as it could have been, and Crystal Mane did a good job supporting, I think our item build was absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that, maybe skill build adjustments could have been better, but I think that's about it, so thanks for watching guys! Uh, that's going to be my video for the day. I am not going to be able to stream today either because uh, I'm going to a going away party for my sister. She's going to Australia for a year. Australia! So I have to go to my parents' house pretty soon here. And uh, I'll try to get some more content out for you guys later this week. But the International is coming up really soon on the 23rd. I'm going to be flying out that day. And then I'm going to be in, at, in Seattle for a week and a half, which is going to be freaking insanely awesome. I cannot wait. It's going to be so fun. So I think I'm going to be lacking on content while I'm there, but I did uh, just buy a laptop in the mail or on the internet yesterday, so I'm going to have a laptop, so I'll be able to render videos. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to record in as high quality, but I think I'm just going to make a lot of vlogs while I'm there, probably. A lot of vlogs while I'm um, FL, so you'll get a lot of vlog content next week, but probably not a lot of Dota content. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.